What are the pros and cons of buying a co-op apartment? In this video, we'll discuss all the advantages and disadvantages of buying a co-op apartment so you can spend your money wisely and buy the best possible option. What is up everyone? My name is Sargis, a licensed real estate agent based here in New York City and this channel is all about New York City real estate. Since the majority of New York City residential real estate market consists of co-ops, unless you're completely excluding co-ops from your search criteria, chances are high that the apartments that fit your needs and look very appealing to you just happens to be in a co-op building. That's why it's important to fully understand the pros and cons when buying a co-op apartment. Just one important note here, that pros and cons largely depend on your specific situation. For one person, something can be an advantage, and for another, the same thing can be a disadvantage. It will make more sense to you once we take a close look at those. Your alternative choice for the most part would be to buy a condo. And since condos are the second most popular property type here in New York City, we'll compare the pros and cons of co-ops to condos. There is also another type of property called a condo, which if you can guess from the name, is a hybrid that includes both condominium and cooperative ownership structures. Condops make up very small percentage of New York City residential real estate market and they have their own peculiarities, which depending on the situation may or may not work for certain people. We'll talk about the condops in a different video. This video will be pros and cons of co-ops when comparing to condos. To better understand the pros and cons of a co-op, you need to know what exactly a co-op is, what are the important financial requirements when buying a co-op apartment, and how a co-op board approval process works. I'll put the timestamps below, so if you know those, you can just skip to the next section. If not, just keep watching and I'll summarize it here. So co-op is a cooperative corporation that owns the entire multi-unit building and every unit in the building has a specific number of shares allocated to it. Just like in a traditional stock market, shares represent how much your portion of that stock is. The same way works in a co-op. For example, let's say this two-bedroom apartment in this co-op building has 350 shares allocated to it and the total number of shares is 6,000. You're buying those 350 shares in this total 6,000 share corporation. You're not buying a real property and you won't have a deed and a title, which means you'll get a stock certificate stating that you own those shares and the proprietary lease will give you an exclusive right to occupy this specific two bedroom apartment in perpetuity as long as you own those shares. On the other hand, if you're buying a condo apartment, you are buying a real property your apartment plus the percentage of any amenities that the building has and common elements such as the entrances, stairways, hallways, elevators and so on belong to you. You'll receive a deed and you'll have a title to your property. Since in a co-op you're buying shares in a corporation, every co-op can have its own rules when it comes to the qualifications of the buyers. Co-op is run by a board of directors. The board has a fiduciary responsibility to act in the best interest of the building and they have a complete discretion when it comes to any resale or sublet in the building. You have to complete and submit a board package and go through an interview with the board in order to buy in the building. Condos also require buyers to submit board packages. Some condos can have a lengthy applications as well, but for most condos, the purchase application is not as lengthy as you see when buying a co-op apartment. And the main difference here is that the condos cannot just reject the application. They have what's called a right of first refusal, which means the board has the right to buy the apartment with the same price and terms as you agreed with the seller. When you submit a condo board package, you're not waiting for an approval or rejection. You're waiting for the condo board to waive its right of first refusal so you can proceed to the closing table. This was just a quick summary of the main differences, but if you want to know more, I made a few videos where I talk about all the details about condos and co-ops. I'll leave the links of those videos in the description below. Let's start with pros of buying a co-op apartment. The first pro would be that co-ops are typically less expensive to purchase than condos. The apartment in a co-op building can cost anywhere between 10 to 30 percent less compared to the same type of apartment in a condo building. The second pro is not only the purchase price is low but the closing costs for the most part are also less. One of the biggest costs that you're saving when buying a co-op with financing is the mortgage recording tax. Since co-ops are not considered as a real property, the loan in a co-op is secured by the shares you're buying 
and therefore no mortgage recording tax for co-ops. To give you an example of how much you're saving just on your mortgage recording tax, let's say you're buying a typical two bedroom, two bathroom co-op unit in Upper East Side with a purchase price of $1.8 million. You put down 20% and finance the remaining 80%, which is $1,440,000. If this was a condo, your effective mortgage recording tax as of today would be 1.925% of the financed amount, which is $27,720. Besides the mortgage recording tax, there is also no title insurance or title search when buying a co-op. There will be a lien search during the due diligence process, but for the most part, it costs a lot less than a typical title search for condos or townhouses. You're also saving in some minor recording fees as well that you would have had if you were to buy a real property. The third pro would be, depending on the building, in general, co-ops also cost less to carry compared to the same type of apartment in a condo building. In a co-op, you have only one bill called a maintenance bill which includes the cost of maintaining the building plus your real estate taxes with condos you'll have two separate bills one for your common charges also known as HOA which will cover the maintenance of the building the maintenance of the common area staff salary and so on and the second one is your property taxes which you will pay directly to New York City Department of Finance. This is a little bit of a generalization here because there are co-ops that have very high maintenance bills, but for the most part, co-ops are just overall less expensive to carry. The other pro is co-ops have much more stability and there is a community in a co-op because every shareholder in a co-op has to go through a long and thorough financial review process Co-ops make sure that people are qualified buyers to carry the apartment without any financial problems in the future. And most of the time, people that buy in a co-op are buying a primary residence to live there long term instead of investors that plan to buy and rent it out. Most of the co-ops have strict sublet policies and even if there are some apartments that are occupied by renters, those renters also have to go through a board approval and interview process. The bottom line is co-ops are selective on who can live in their building, become their business partner and part of the cooperative community. And when it comes to cons of a co-op, the first thing is the strict financial requirements. Those are the minimum down payment, post-closing liquidity, and your debt to income ratio. Every building is different. For some buildings, those requirements can be very strict, which means the down payment minimum can be high. They might require very low DTI ratio and a significant amount of post-closing liquidity. And some buildings are more lenient, but usually every co-op will have a certain minimum down payment requirement. They would want to see a certain amount of post-closing liquid assets. And for the most part, the DTI ratio requirement is much lower than the bank will require in order to approve you for a loan. I have a full video just talking about the co-op requirements. If you want to know more details, the link is in the description below. Before we continue, if you're getting any value out of this video, just by liking the video and subscribing to the channel will be a huge favor. Thank you for doing so. Now let's get back to the video. In addition to having a financial requirement, co-ops can also limit the help if someone else is planning to assist you with your purchase. The ways someone can help you are in a form of co-purchase, gifts, parents buying, or being a guarantor. If for some reason you need a help of someone else with your apartment purchase, it doesn't mean that you can do so in every co-op building. Again, all those requirements in details are covered in this video. Also, co-ops can not only limit the help of someone when you're trying to buy, but they can also limit how you can occupy your home. One situation can be if you're planning to use the apartment as a pied de terre which means a part-time residence. In some co-ops, pied-a-terre is not allowed. So if you're coming to New York City a few times a year on a regular basis and you prefer to buy a place to stay instead of going to a hotel, you need to look for an apartment in a buildings where pied-a-terre is allowed. Otherwise, your application will not be approved if you're trying to buy a part-time residence in a building where pied-a-terre is not allowed or you have to claim that apartment as your primary residence. The other thing in this category of apartment usage is if you're trying to sublet your apartment, if for some reason you no longer want to live there, but prefer to keep the apartment and rent it instead of selling it. Co-ops also have sublet policies, which again, depending on the building can be very strict, such as sublets are not allowed, 
or it can be more relaxed, such as unlimited subletting after number of years of ownership. Other sublet policies can be, for example, sublets allowed every two out of four or five years. Basically, after subletting your unit for two years, you either have to come back and live there or keep it vacant for another two or three years before you can rent it again. Or it can be a maximum number of years during the life of your ownership with or without any prior occupancy. With this type of sublet policy, usually I see is three or four years maximum subletting. The next con of buying a co-op apartment is the potential board rejection. When buying a co-op apartment, you have to submit a board package and go through a long and thorough financial review process. And if the board likes what they see on the paper, you will receive an interview invitation. And you have to be approved by the board in order to proceed to the closing table. Maybe this will change in the future, but as of today, co-op boards don't have to disclose the reason for your rejection. Next, Closing usually takes longer in a co-op because of the extra step of board package and interview process. Again, this depends on the building, but in general, co-op boards don't have any time limit that they have to review and respond to your board package. I've seen co-ops where the board package review and interview together took less than two weeks, and I also have seen co-ops where we had to wait more than five weeks just for the board package review. Another con for co-ops is the flip tax. When you're trying to sell your co-op unit, in addition to the city and state transfer taxes, a lot of co-ops might require the sellers to pay what's called a flip tax. This is basically a fee charged for the transfer of a co-op apartment. It is usually anywhere between one to 3% of the purchase price, or it can be a specific dollar amount per share. This is just an additional revenue source for the building to help strengthen the building's financials. Some condos also might have a flip tax, but flip taxes are mostly seen in co-ops. And the last one that I can think of is since a co-op is an older type of ownership than a condo, a lot of co-ops are simply an older type of buildings. If you would like to live in a new construction luxury building made of glass with a typical floor to ceiling windows, you'll most likely need to buy a condo. The important thing to mention here is there is no one size fits all approach. For one person, one thing can be an advantage, for another, the same thing can be a disadvantage. For example, let's say you have a solid employment history, good credit, and you have saved enough money to buy an apartment. In this case, those strict financial requirements can work to your advantage. Because if you're competing with other offers, one of the key decision-making factors for sellers of a co-op unit when reviewing offers is the buyer's financials. And since your financial situation is better, the chances are high that your offer will be accepted. And depending on the market and how well your offer and your financials were presented to the seller, you might even be able to negotiate the price if you can make the seller comfortable knowing that you're a qualified buyer to close on the property. The worst thing for the seller would be to sign a contract with someone who's not qualified and gets rejected by the board, which means they have to start the process all over again. And obviously, if you're planning to finance the apartment with low down payment or your DTI is too high or you don't have enough post-closing liquidity to show, then those strict financial requirements are a disadvantage to you. Or if you're planning to buy a primary residence and you don't have any intention of renting your apartment, well, in this case, a co-op with a strict sublet policy can be a great option for you because your neighbors will also be homeowners who live there full time and take a good care of the building. And your competition would be a lot less in this case because pretty much anyone can buy a condo, including investors, corporations, partnerships, trusts, and LLCs, and the building has a little to no control on who is the buyer. On the other hand, if you're planning to rent out your unit a lot, the building that has a strict sublet policy is not the best option for you. And if you're not in rush and can wait a little longer to close on your co-op apartment, for the most part, you'll have a lower purchase price, lower closing costs, and lower carrying costs when comparing to the same type of apartment in a condo building. Or if you're someone who doesn't want the uncertainty or you don't want to disclose all your financial background and go through a board review and interview process, 
Well, in this case, co-op might not be the best option for you. This list of examples can go on and on, and everyone's situation is different. Always consult with a licensed professional who first of all has an experience, not necessarily the number of years they've been in the business, but what kind of past transactions they've done and how many. A friend of your friend who let's say has a New York state license and has been selling houses in Long Island and is not familiar with co-op requirements and process might not be the best option to work with if you're trying to buy or sell a co-op unit in Manhattan. And second of all, work with someone who's able to listen to you carefully, understand your situation, explain you the process clearly, answer your questions and properly guide you through your home buying journey. That's it for today's video. Hopefully I was able to provide you some valuable information. I'm also doing weekly one-on-one -on -one consultations completely for free. If you're someone who's thinking of buying, selling or renting here in New York City, or if you just have questions about New York City real estate. My email is in the description of this video. Just email me to book your time. If you want to see how much money you need to buy an apartment in New York City and what are the exact closing costs, you can just click the video you see on your screen. Thanks for watching. Until next time.